Squire, Realtor with Keller Williams Classic Realty Northwest. And thank you for joining us for another episode of Explore Maple Grove. Today I'm here with Terry Churchill, who is a financial coach. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Well, why don't you tell us about your business? Yeah. Well, I'm a financial coach, which is um, different from a financial planner. That's the first thing I usually have to distinguish to people is, so what I do is I help people uh, create strategies for their money that line up with their values. Okay. So for example, um, I found in working with people, if they if it's really important to them in, in their heart, they really wanna be generous, mm -hmm. but they don't have any money or they feel like they don't have any money for giving, mm -hmm that's stressful, that creates a lot of stress. Or maybe one of their values is to help their kids pay for college, but they're not putting any money aside for that. Okay. That creates a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. So a financial planner will actually help you find an account to put the money in for the, mm -hmm. for the college fund, where I help people get control of their money. So I take them through three, actually three stages. Okay. First we get refocused mm -hmm. and we focus, get everything clear and into focus what's coming in, what's going out, mm -hmm. and what goals do you have? And then the second phase of coaching is to um, get control. Yeah. So what is, how exactly, how much are you spending on groceries? How much do you wanna spend on groceries? Yeah. How much are you spending in all these different categories? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of times people are spending money, a lot of us do this, and we don't know where it's all going. Exactly. That's the biggest thing, where did all the money go? <laughs> so getting control, knowing where the money's going, um, and how much of it is going where. Mm -hmm. And then the third phase is to create a plan. So now we've got all the information, people mm -hmm. are really clear, and then we then we get to plan. Mm -hmm. How much do we need to put aside for, you know, for education? How much do you wanna put into retirement? How much do we need to put into the travel fund if people wanna plan a vacation? A lot of people say, oh, I'd love to travel, but I can't afford it. Yeah. And once we work together, that usually isn't true. It's just a matter of reallocating those funds mm -hmm. to the vacation fund. So, Absolutely. So that's what I do. Okay, and how did you get into that? Well, uh, years ago, we were in the financial, or in the real estate market. Mm -hmm. My husband was a builder, and all of, we had a lot of investment properties, and that was when the real estate market crashed in oh. 2008. Okay. And we lost everything because we didn't have a plan. Mm -hmm. And we were just spending, I mean, it, the money was coming in and yeah. it was going out just as actually faster than it was coming in, mm -hmm. no matter how much was coming in. So we were devastated. I mean, we went through a horrible, horrible uh, financial devastation during mm -hmm. that time. And we literally lost everything Did you? materially. I wow. mean, every material thing that we owned was gone. And, um, we eventually, through that pain, found a financial coach, started working with them. Okay. And for the first time in years, I had hope, mm -hmm. I had direction. One of my favorite quotes is Jim Rohn says, you can't change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction. Yeah. And that's what I found happened with us is, instead of just spiraling downward, all of a sudden we had a direction and we were turning that ship in the way we wanted it to yeah. go. And so through that process, very early on, I looked at my husband, I said, I wanna do this. I wanna help people with this. Okay. Before they get to the point that we were at. Right. I want, because if we'd had a plan in place, mm -hmm. really once you have a plan and you have a system, you can weather those storms so much sure. more easily. Sure. And we weren't able to weather it really at all. And it was very, very traumatic. And I want to help people avoid that. So that's why I got into it. Definitely. You know, that's where a lot of people get their business from is they've had a pain related to that. And yes. then they will use that to help others. So that's wonderful yeah. that you did that. And you hear stories of people who are very, very wealthy, but they don't know how to pay the mortgage next month. And it's because they overspent. Yep. Um, and so that's really sad to see that they're that they're doing that and they're miserable, worried about money. You yeah. Know? So. Yeah. Um, well, good. So, what would your clients or do you come customers say that they love most about your business? Um, you know, it goes back to what my story, what I've been through. Mm -hmm. I think people that I work with, most of them would say that. They feel um, no judgment, mm -hmm. no shame. Mm -hmm. Nobody's scared. Nobody's story scares me. Like, oh my gosh, that's way okay. too much. You know, you're in too deep. I can't help you okay. because of what I went through. I have yet. I've been doing this for almost five years, 
and I have yet to work with clients and I work with people that some of them are in some really tough situations with debt and, mm -hmm. and maybe even facing foreclosure. Okay. You know, there are some crisis situations, but I have yet to work with anyone mm -hmm. that has made as many poor decisions as we made <laughs> or uh, lost as much or, you know, been to that level of um, their, their bottom. They feel like they've hit bottom. I'm like, ah, that doesn't <laughs> scare me. I, I was way, I went way yeah. lower than that. So yeah. I think that's what they like is that I, I learned from my own experience. Mm -hmm. And so they, they trust me that sure. I, I know if, oh, if she got out of that, you know, we're not nearly in that bad of shape, but there's hope for us. So, yeah. you know, that must have been just awful to literally lose everything. So you're talking your house, your cars, like, what do you do? How do you start over? I don't know if you have like a one minute or two minute answer to something like that. Yeah, you know, that is a great question. Um, the, the way to start over, what we did for a really long time um, was look the other way and hope, kind of hope it would go away, uh, it, which is what caused the, the collapse. Yeah. So the biggest thing I tell people, the first step, communicate. Communicate with your creditors, okay. with your mortgage company. S don't avoid the calls. Don't avoid the letters so that you get, you know, by registered mail or the yeah. knock on the door. Talk to the people, contact them. Tell them what you're going through. Mm -hmm. They don't always have a lot of compassion, but sometimes they do. Okay. But the one thing they will do is hold off taking legal action if you're in communication with them. Uh, okay. So even if you can pay them a little bit or even if you can just communicate that, that you can't pay anything right now but that you, they know that you want to mm -hmm. and that you're communicating with them. And that's what happened to us. We just started communicating. We started calling okay. the creditors. We started calling the mortgage company and working things out if it wasn't too late. Yeah. If we had started earlier on communicating with everyone, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have probably lost so much okay yeah. that's really good advice because mm -hmm. people will just duck and hide and you know don't let them find yeah. you <laughs> that's it. eventually yeah. they do find you unfortunately yep <laughs> they have their address and <laughs> um, if i can find you on whitepages.com they can find you <laughs> right right um, so what are your business goals over the next year I am hoping to, I've been doing one-on-one -on -one coaching or mm -hmm. a lot of couples too. So either one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. or one, two to one. And so I, this year, my goal is to help more people. Mm -hmm. And I want to do that by, um, I'm starting to create a group coaching program oh, okay. that will be available online where people can sign up and have more of a group setting where they can ask questions. They'll have all the same tools and resources mm -hmm. that I provide to my one-on-one -on -one clients and all okay. the same trainings, but it will be, I'll be able to help more people at, you know, one-on-one, yeah. -on -one, there's only so many hours in each day, but if I can help a group of people, one um, that allows for more people to get help and to get control of their finances, but it also um, will lower the price point so it'll be more affordable to more people. Mm -hmm. So that's my goal this year is to make that available. I imagine that's a challenging part where I'm too broke to get help, but they need the help. Yes. And you get to get paid because you deserve it. You have the expertise. Right. So that's a, a catch-22. Yeah. <laughs> what I have found, and people, I think all my clients would agree to this, is that it's really, if you look at it more of an, as an investment mm -hmm. in your future, it, when you pay the money for coaching, you increase your odds of success, you know, yeah. the, by exponentially, yes. you know, there's like an 80 or 90% chance of success or a higher chance of success when you work mm -hmm. with a coach. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is it's so common when people work with me, they find money, I oh, call yeah. it. So once we go through their budget and they think, oh my goodness, we're spending five, 600, maybe even more per month than, than what's coming in, this is hopeless. Mm -hmm. Well, once we start really looking closely, mm -hmm. they realize, oh, a lot of times we'll flip that around and, and we once we start looking at things and fine-tuning it and really getting control, mm -hmm. there will be an extra five or six hundred a month. That's awesome. And so people say, it feels like we found five hundred dollars yeah. a month. Yeah, so, oh, that's excellent. That so I would really like it. Yeah, so I say it pays for itself very, pretty quickly. Oh, absolutely. And so last question would be just, what do you love most about Maple Grove? Um, gosh, there's so much to love. 
Girls. Yes. Maple Grove. We moved here just a year and a half ago. Oh, okay. And I've wanted to be in Maple Grove for a long time, and it did not disappoint. Okay. I we love the people, mm -hmm. and we love the atmosphere here. It's mm -hmm. there just seems to be a very happy, positive atmosphere, and yes. people are really down to earth. Um, the businesses that I've worked with and gone into, same thing, I get that same feeling. Like people are just happy. So it sort of has a small town feel with all the big town convenience. You know, yes. everything's really close. There's everything here. Yes. And, and, but yet it feels kind of small townish. And there you have it again. People say over and over again that it's that small town feel. There are 70,000 people in Maple Grove, Isn't it but amazing? it doesn't feel like that, no. does it? And you run into people you know. Yeah. I mean, people you maybe haven't seen for a while, but you run into them in the store, and it's like, oh my goodness, you catch up with them. Yeah. You know, so it's really a great community to live in. I totally agree. Yeah. I've been here 20 years, so wow. a long time. I yeah. can't believe we've built, it's changed dramatically since I then. I bet. <laughs> for sure. Well, thank you so much, Terry. I appreciate your time today. Yeah, thank and thank you. you for watching today. I appreciate you tuning in for another episode of Explore Maple Grove. This is Sherry McGuire, Realtor with Keller Williams Classic Realty Northwest. And if you have any questions about buying, selling, or investing in real estate, or even need a good handyman, give me a call. Thanks and have a great day.